Daniel Nattern was a Scottish wood turner who assassinated English civil servant Edward Drummond, while suffering from paranoid delusions. Through his trial and its aftermath, he has given his name to the legal test of criminal insanity in England, and other common law jurisdictions known as the Nattern Rules. There is disagreement over how Nattern's name should be spelt. Nattern is favoured in both English and American law reports, although the original trial report used McNaughton, Bethlehem and Broadmoor records use McNaughton and McNaughton. In a 1981 book about the case, Rickard Moran, professor of criminology at Mount Holyoke College, uses the spelling McNaughton, arguing that this was the family spelling. Until 1981, there was only one known signature. That which Mnattern affixed to a sworn statement given before the magistrate at Bow Street during his arraignment. This signature, preserved in the Metropolitan Police file at the Public Records Office in Chancery Lane, London, first came to the attention of legal scholars in 1956. According to an authority at the British Museum, this signature was spelled McNaughton. Since this spelling did not conform to any of those in popular use, it did not help to resolve the controversy. Moran discovered a second signature during his research. On the front page of the Scotch Reformers Gazette, supplementary edition for 4 March 1843, there appeared an artist's sketch of Daniel Nattern standing in the dock at Old Bailey, accompanied by an engraving of his signature. This signature revealed that the apparent U in the Bow Street signature was actually an A. It also indicated that the apostrophe was used by printers to signify a small letter C placed above the line, since the Scotch Reformers Gazette, in the article accompanying the sketch and signature, used an inverted apostrophe to resemble more closely the letter C. The spelling McNaughton was confirmed in the Glasgow Postal Directory for the years 1835 to 1844. While the Victorians were not always consistent in the way they spelled their names, even in official documents, several signatures of Natton's father, uncovered while examining financial records at the Bank of Scotland, indicate that the McNaughton spelling was the one used by the family. Most of what is known about Natton comes from evidence given at his trial and newspaper reports that appeared between his arrest and his trial. He was born in Scotland in 1813, the illegitimate son of a Glasgow woodhorner and landlord also called Daniel Natton. After the death of his mother Ada, Natton went to live with his father's family, and became an apprentice and later a journeyman at his father's workshop in Stockwell Street, Glasgow. When his father decided not to offer him a partnership, Natton left the business, and, after a three-year career as an actor, returned to Glasgow in 1835, to set up his own wood-turning workshop. For the next five years he ran a successful wood-turning business, first in Turner's Court, and then in Stockwell Street. He was sober and industrious, and by living frugally was able to save a considerable sum of money. In his spare time he attended the Glasgow Mechanics Institute and the Athenaeum Debating Society, walked and read. He taught himself French, so that he could read La Roche Foucault. His political views were radical, and he employed the Chartist Abram Duncan in his workshop. In December 1814 Natton sold his business, and spent the next two years in London and Glasgow, with a brief trip to France. In the summer of 1842 he attended lectures on anatomy in Glasgow, but otherwise it is not known what he did with his time. Whilst in Glasgow in 1841 he complained to various people, including his father, the Glasgow Commissioner of Police and an MP, that he was being persecuted by the Tories and followed by their spies. No one took him seriously, believing him to be deluded. In January 1843, Natton was noticed acting suspiciously around Whitehall in London. On the afternoon of 20 January the Prime Minister's private secretary, civil servant Edward Drummond, was walking towards Downing Street from Charing Cross, when Natton approached him from behind, drew a pistol and fired at point-blank range into his back. Natton was overpowered by a police constable, before he could fire a second pistol. 
it is generally thought, although the evidence is not conclusive, that Natron was under the impression that he had shot the Prime Minister, Robert Peel, 